In this session, we will address the Princeton PhD's fourth requirement after showing some inspirational enigma. Howard Johnson, Jim Murray, and others showed free energy devices more than 20 years ago. Unfortunately, their explanations were theoretical without equations, but their biggest shortcoming was the fourth requirement, which I call MCE. So what's new? Scientific dogma like flat earth and fictitious forces do not change unless profiteers can make a buck. I have no ill will for profiteers unless they want me to worship their god or they want to leave my grandchildren fully scorched earth. If they don't care about their grandchildren, there is little that anyone can do. An eyewitness, a MIT PhD, to Johnson's motor revealed two things to me. How it took more than a week to adjust the state of magnets differently than shown. The trailing gaps needed to be about a millimeter greater than the forward gaps, and at least one state of magnet needed to be loose. That privileged information might lead to a theory that a rotating field requirement is met by the difference in gaps, and the trigger requirement is met by the loose stator. Then, with more catalytic efficiency, the polarity difference might meet the trigger requirement, and nothing would need to be loose. Generators don't have a trigger requirement and are inherently a rotating field, so the only issues for OU generators are correct equations and MCE. Jim admitted to me that solid rotors don't work. It's quite obvious that linked flux must cross the spaces between the lamination shown. Energy between lamination gaps is not in the working gaps, so it only affects the torque and MCE efficiencies. A good inventor might ask, then steal what Tesla proved and say, yep, stay tuned. Fausto Martin might have the honor of a perpetual motion toy with the most views. I, like many others, have tried to figure it out. Using the Princeton principles, a rotating field is produced by the circumferential spiral or the angular spiral of the rotor magnets or a combination of both. Triggering is from loose bearings or the uneven state of magnets or a combination of both. Fausto's device may have been the linchpin in our understanding the correlation between OU generators and impulse powered thrusters. The correlation comes from defining impulse as energy per cycle and seeing how it affects conversion eff efficiencies in the different venues. Motors and thrusters want maximum catalytic efficiency, which may be limited to 50%, or 50% efficiency may be just the best we can prove. Ironically, OU generators are greatly benefited by MCE, so many will surely support a conspiracy theory to explain why OU generators weren't developed in 1958. This correlation is the foundation of one of our observations, maybe the most significant. Pioneers like Fausto, Howard, and Jim deserve better than to be branded as charlatans. Certainly, their grandchildren deserved them to see them recognized in some Hall of Fame. I cannot recall any pioneer like them ever getting a Nobel Peace Prize, even when they confounded the likes of Einstein. Tesla is included in that pioneer group. For the rain cycle, catalytic efficiency is simple. Catalytic heat of vaporization is approximately 1,000 BTUs per pound. At the top of a 250-foot dam, that pound is worth less than a third of a BTU. For the gyroscope, the gyroscope kinetic energy is the catalyst, and the potential energy lost in a rotation cycle is barely perceived. Kids who are not good at gyrating hula hoops often spun them like a coin and watch them fall down, noticing some things happening that don't really have a fictitious name. An ideal gyroscope would be hula hoop shaped. It seems like to stand up, hula hoops require much less kinetic energy than gyroscopes. An inventor or a pioneer might one day run some experiments to determine if hula hoop catalytic efficiency is near 50%.